I'll give you a little insight into my repair jig for my Fender Rhodes. I'm in the process of restoring this 54 key piano. Um, this basically is right in the midst of the work where I clean um, this uh, tone bar, which luckily on this 54 key roads, even though it was made in 1981, uh, they were relatively free of corrosion, so I didn't have to use the wire brush on the drill. So I just wipe these down with mineral spirits, and then I clean the actual, the tine, which is underneath, right? It's the, the piece down here. Uh, had some rust on them, so I used some steel wool, and I pretty much cleaned that rust off. And then I replace these uh, screws and grommets and, and, and replace them. So you can see here that I'm only on about uh, E-flat before I have to go all the way up the keyboard. Here are my boxes of screws uh, to refinish, basically replacing the, the screws and the grommets, which gives you better tone and sustain on the tone bars. And meanwhile, I get to clean the tone bars at the same time. The difficulty with it is, is that when you take the Tyne tone bar assembly off, you take these two screws out right here, there are two springs underneath. And I never could figure out from any of the websites exactly the cataloging of these springs, which is the suspension of the tine. So I had to find out a way to be able to organize these springs because I took take all the tines off at one time instead of doing it, uh, I take them all off at once instead of one at a time. So I came up with a jig, which looks like this. And this is basically a piece of wood that has 88 slots. Well, I have a 73 key, so I didn't have to go all, all 88 notes. But basically, it's got two nails for each assembly. And as you can see, as I take them off the piano here, I put each one of the springs on one of the nails in the corresponding the correct position and then I put the tine there and that keeps these organized so I, I don't have to take them off all at one time I guess I could do it one at a time but it's quicker when you're working to do uh, similar activities at the same time so when you have the screwdriver out the electric screwdriver I might as well just go do all the screws at the same time so this is a way that I came up with to keep the tine tone bar assemblies organized. So up here on the top it goes all the way from note 80 which is E. Not sure how while I went all the way that far because I have a 73 key Rhodes. But anyway so these are the tine and tone bar assemblies off that 54 key piano. I had one broken tone uh, tine when I took off C the lowest note which was um, 16 uh, the the time broke and I ordered a new one and he sent me the uh, the wrong the wrong time but anyway this is a, a fairly not clever but a utilitarian way to uh, keep track of what's going on that way I don't have to I didn't replace any of these springs uh, these are the original springs from 1981 but they seem to do okay and I couldn't really find them readily available in the different colors and strengths that uh, the roads required, so I figured I'll just go ahead and use what I've got. Uh, it was really out of necessity more than anything. I would have replaced all the springs if I could have found a kit, but there wasn't one readily available on, on the internet. So normally I've got that sitting up here on my 73 key. But this one basically pretty much has already been restored for the most part. These tone bar and tine assemblies were very very dirty and corroded so I had all of these taken off and placed on that jig on the floor over there that thing and these required uh, scrubbing with steel wool and the uh, tine assemblies on the underneath down there had to be wire brushed with the drill so the post that's underneath this screw there's a post that goes down and the tine that sticks out I had to put each one of those posts in the drill in four different directions and use the wire brush, brush to clean the corrosion off of the post and steel wool to clean the rust off of the tine. But you see I've already gotten this back together. It's been back together for quite a long time. 
I replaced the damper rail, rail felts, which is the pivot that the, that the note uh, pivots on, right? It's in the middle. Those were little round washers. I think I have some of those left over. But, yeah, so these are the damper felts that, that I need to replace. These are balance rail felts. So it's just one piece of uh, felt like that, and the other ones were squashed down. So these brought the keys up and made the action much improved on the Rode 73 key. And uh, the, road, the, the felts that they sent me for the, the front rail, which is where the key goes down and supposedly hits, right, the front rail. Well, I found out when I took all these keys off that the key never ever hits that front rail of felt. There are two green strips underneath here, so that it's correct that uh, on the 73, there's green strips of felt rather than round donuts like he sent me there in that package. So I didn't even have to touch those because the key mm -hmm. never gets down to the felt. It, it basically, the... The hammer throws and comes in contact, and that stops the key from going any further. Um, uh, let's see. The balance rail felts did. Let's see. They did have to be. They have shims on them. So I took all these keys out and laid them on a card table, and one by one, with two hands I had to reach in with with two hands and with my fingernails grab that washer on either side and pull the the shims off and up and then pull the piece of felt off and then put the new piece of felt down and then take the ori original existing shims of paper that made these keys even put the same shims back down so that I didn't have to change those and do that process again and it came out pretty darn even so I'm I'm pretty happy Voicing is definitely not perfect. I need to tune this E flat back to E flat instead of D. But and that note. Not sure why that's not sounding. This A flat pickup right here, the A flat is out. And I guess low uh, E is out too. I'm going to tap that with a screwdriver to see. Yep, that one's out. So that, I don't think that one has been out, or maybe it has, and I just haven't taken the time to replace it. When you replace these pickups, you have to be really careful because they're sensitive and they're fragile. And I'll show you a little bit since I've gotten the keys taken off. Here are the, uh, I'm going to go back around this way maybe because I can get more light. But these are the replacement pickups that I put in the 54 key on the top with the red pickups instead of the white ones down here. The funny thing is with this 54 key was, uh, I have one minute left, is that none of the pickups in it were bad. Uh, it was only the... Uh, RCA jack in the in the front jack here. So, but I harvested these good pickups, if you can believe it, to restore this 73. So these white pickups that I took out of the top here, I came and they were uh, replaced here on this uh, 73 key at various places. And you can see I had to do the soldering. Obviously, my soldering got much better. When I put these back in again, I can't. I think these are rewound, but I did tin my wire. Uh, I wanted to change the wiring schematic of this over to what the 73 is, which is these tines are soldered in groups, but I didn't know back then, and I went ahead and I did it. But they're basically daisy changed one on one. I had to find the right braid of wire. Radio Shack was really thin, multi stranded, then you have to twist it together solder it on there and then you tin the wire so you coat the wire and solder so that it stops corrosion so I got it's not per pretty perfect but it's uh, pretty good um, so all of the pickups actually do work on this
So anyway, that's just a little bit of Fender Rhodes playing and some uh, Rhodes uh, restoration stuff. This is Paul Reichley. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Ciao.